Today I'm transforming this ordinary desk into the ultimate PC building workbench. I asked you guys on X what your dream workbench looks like, gathered every top suggestion, added in some of my own, and purchased over 20 items to realize our collective vision of a system builder's paradise. Some assembly required. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. No, I'm not talking about doing a soul quest on ayahuasca with your lame guru, guys. Come on. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. And Fume looks at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it? Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills that void in a natural, guilt-free way. The Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial, and it's even designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is super helpful for de-stressing while breaking your bad habit. The base was launched in January. It's a weighted stand to rest your Fume on when you're not using it, with a magnet inside that keeps your Fume attached. The Fume device can also be spun around on it, which is good for even more fidgeting. I've been using my Fume for the past few months, and I've enjoyed all the flavors I've tried so far, but if I gotta choose, White Cranberry is goaded as hell. All right, Team White Cranberry, let's go. I like that Fume is a great way for me to indulge my oral fixation, and I find myself constantly playing with all of its movable parts because they just have a super satisfying tactile feel. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, obviously, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash bitwit or scan the QR code and use code bitwit to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code bitwit to save an additional 10% off on your order today. All right, first a quick note about the desk itself. This is a motorized up desk that I've had for the past few years. I've used it for literally everything from presenting on camera to PC builds. And even though it's got a fair share of scratches and dings in it, it's held up remarkably well for how often I use it. If you're gonna be building a workbench for PC building, I highly suggest one like this that goes up and down, whether it's motorized or a more affordable crank option or something like that. It's just really nice to elevate it, not only for filming for me, but also for PC building if I wanna get a better vantage point or get lower, depending on what part of a build I'm trying to access. The tabletop itself is from Ikea. I sanded and stained it a while back, and it's a plenty big surface for any build I throw at it. We are going to be mounting a number of items underneath the desk today, so I did have to make sure, even though it's a, it's a large surface, I had to spend some time measuring things out to ensure that nothing interferes with this large metal frame under here. So that's all good to go, though. We should be able to fit a bunch of stuff down there, starting with this power strip. This is a 10 outlet power strip. It's going to be mounting right under here, under the left side of the desk right here. It's got five outlets on one side and five on an adjacent side. It's got two USB-C ports that support PD 20 watt quick charging and two USB type A ports with QC 3.0. If I remember correctly, it's supposed to be mounted with adhesive, which looks like, yep, there's some adhesive there. And it did not come with any screws, just more adhesive. So hopefully this adhesive is sticky. Okay, okay so it looks like it's got this quick release. Aha, it just slides in and out like that. And it's already pre-applied with adhesion. I'm gonna try to mount it as centered as possible. It doesn't have to be exact science, but I do want the outlets to be kind of on the very edge of the table, as close as possible. Make it straight, Kyle, make it straight. Pressure. Pressure. <laughs> All right, that's good. It's also got a six foot cable, three prong. It's it, it's six foot. So I don't want it just dangling on the floor whenever I'm not using it or plugging it in. So I have some cable hooks that we're gonna actually mount to the sides of the desk. That way we can actually just hook it around, you know, kind of like a vacuum cleaner. Although I couldn't really find proper cable hooks for this purpose. So I just bought coat hangers. We'll see how this goes. Actually, I lied. The cord is 10 feet long. Even more reason for these hooks. If any of you guys know where I can get some proper cord hooks instead of using coat hangers, please let me know in the comments. This is the best I could find. I did look. I did look thoroughly. This is all I got. All right, let's see how this works. It looks a little funky, but if it's functional, I can live with it. Ba -dum -bum -bum -ba -da -da. Perfecto, looks good. Now we're on the right side of the desk and we're gonna mount some of these magnetic tool strips. These are really handy for mounting tools, like this handy dandy Spyderco knife. Quick and easy access right here on the side of the desk. I dig it. The kit I got comes with five strips. They're about a foot long each. They're very strong magnets and they come with these little interlocking plastic pieces. You kind of connect them like this 
this. You can bridge two strips together, but I'm not going to use them mainly because they're much wider than the actual desk. So that's going to look kind of funky. Plus they're raised. So that means the magnetic strips won't actually sit flush with the edge of the desk. And I don't really like that because it just kind of protrudes a bit more, takes up a bit more space. So we're going to go without them. We got enough room for two of these strips on the side of the desk. I don't think we're going to need more than that. We don't have a ton of tools that we're going to be stashing here. Plus I don't want a whole bunch of tools just sticking up around the workbench. Oh my God. Oh no. The screw head just snapped off. Wow, that's that's awesome. Okay, let's see if I can plier this out of here. <sighs> Is that even turning? There you go. Well, shit, dude. I'm afraid to use the rest of these. These are cheap as hell. I think I have some other screws. Other screws, yay! Who's to say these will be any better though? Uh, let's see. All right, looks good. Holds these big chunky pliers that just saved my ass. I fix it, beautiful. Knife, we already saw that. LTT screwdriver. It's not, there's no magnets. This is not magnetic. The only thing magnetic is the tip. Ah! The only way to do it, and I, I have other magnetic tips in here. These are not the LTT ones, so I can't speak on behalf of those, but <laughs> you literally have to just keep it open. That's, that's kind of ghetto. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Got the second strip on there. Looks pretty good. Swanky, swanky. I mounted them right next to each other, so it just looks like one flush strip. It's actually beautiful. Also want to point out that the magnets, again, are very, very strong, but the screws are not. So if you're going to buy this kit that I've linked in the description, just, just get your own screws. Moving on, though, we've got some drawers. I want some storage. Obviously, I'm in an office space where I've got plenty of storage, as you can see from the giant cabinet there. But when you're building a system, there's a handful of things that you just want really quick access to. So that's why I've got these drawers. This is like a, an XL one. They come in different sizes, obviously. A little baby one here. I think this is the small. And this is the either the large or the extra large. They're a little pricey. They're from a brand called Core Minded. Never heard of them before. They seem to be very high quality. Super sturdy. I love how it's kind of padded on the bottom. And this is just plenty of space here with this, this large drawer for the iFixit kit and stuff like that. Obviously, these get mounted underneath the desk. This one's actually going to go on the back side because I've got some plans for that one specifically. More on that later. But the big drawer is going to be at the front of the workbench and I'm going to move it to the right side. However, I don't have enough clearance to mount it there because I have plans for this area too underneath the desk. So that means I have to actually relocate our little up and down switch here, which isn't a problem. It's just two screws. I got to shift it over a couple inches and then I'll be able to mount this plus the other thing we're installing and we should be good. <laughs> the drawers installed baby baby yeah i'm so happy with these now that they're installed i can actually get a feel for them they're so nice they glide really nice they go in nice and it doesn't take too much effort to pull out but it's like firm it's tactile the handle feels secure it's just sturdy it's a very sturdy drawer it almost feels stock highly recommend if you're looking for something like this for your own desk or workbench i love the padded interior once again it's just it's just a premium product all around so that's the front drawer the big one and the little guy over here again you guys are probably wondering what the hell do you need a little drawer at the back of the workbench for well Power supply cables, which means the power supply can't be too far away. You are correct, because I've got a PSU. Why do I have this random PSU? Test PSU for test boots and troubleshooting. This is going to be so nice. In case you don't know, a test boot is where you simply test out the core components of your system before you've built the entire PC, just to find out that something doesn't work or it's not posting for some reason, then you got to disassemble the whole thing. So usually I'll just test boot like the CPU, motherboard and GPU and the RAM. Those four core components that aren't installed in the case yet, you haven't wired up all the RGB, just in case something goes wrong, it's less of a pain in the ass to fix. Our designated test PSU is the Corsair HX1000i. Now you guys are probably like, well, a test PSU, Kyle, you should probably go with like a 1200 or 1500. Why not just max out the wattage? Well, that's because with the test boot, you typically don't put a giant load on it. You're just trying to see if you clear post. Any serious load that you're putting on a new PC is going to be on the PSU that's inside of it. This is going to be more than plenty. It's fully modular, which is super nice. 80 plus, what is this? 80 plus go? Hey, plus platinum, better. Oh, that's right. The HX series is mega platinum, super fancy. So this is a solid unit, quiet fan, and we need a place to put it. We are actually gonna mount this underneath the table as well. I got this nice little mount. Bada bing, bada boom. This is actually for UPSs, uninterruptible power supplies, but we don't really need one of those because we're not doing any serious work or at risk of much data loss, which is what a UPS is mostly used for. But I figured, hey, you know what? If this can hold a beefy UPS, why can't it hold a beefy power supply? And sure enough, it fits like a 
good glove. Hopefully it's secure. I, I, I see these straps and I'm like, huh, I don't want it to be like super wobbly, you know, once it's in there. I guess we'll have to find out. And in case you're wondering, this mount is from Viva! Okay, sorry. Okay, I've been playing around with this for a little bit, and here's the deal. The way that this power supply pretty much has to mount to this mount is like a this. Fan face down because there's a bit more airflow here. There's a bit more of an opening than this side. That wouldn't be good. We are covering up the fan a little bit from these guys, but it's it's not too bad. I'm hoping that it's, you know, again, we're not doing heavy loads on this, guys. We're just doing some idle testing and stuff like that. The problem that I have, and it's not a big problem, I guess, just a minor kind of a bummer, is that I was actually hoping that we could mount this in such a way where the connectors on the power supply are facing outward, so it would just be easy access to plug in and take stuff out. But that's not going to work because this mount, as you can see, is more wide than it is long, and it's just not going... To fit. It only goes that far back because then we hit the uh, the steel frame of the desk. So we have to rotate it this way, which means that all of our connectors or our plugs are going to be on the left side. A little bit harder to access. Still very possible, especially since I can move the desk up and down, but it's just one of those slight bummers that I was hoping we could get around, but it doesn't look like it. I did try mounting this power supply a million different ways in this mount. And it's just nothing else is practical. I thought about doing it this way, but then you're blocking the, uh, the power cord. Oh, I almost forgot to mention one last thing about this setup is that once this is in here, this is snug, but it's not completely snug, which means if I exert enough force trying to plug something in, I mean, I really have to jam it in there and like actually try to move it. The power supply will nudge back ever so slightly. I think it's just because they didn't have any kind of like rubber padding on, on this side. It would have been nice if they just added some rubber feet here that probably would have solved it. But since that's not the case, I am going to do my own solution with some 3M adhesive. We're just going to put two big squares right there. I shouldn't do this while filming because I can't really see very well. Burr, burr, burr. Okay, that looks, that looks all right. This will definitely keep it in place and that means I can just jam it as hard as I want. Not that I will, but I just like that extra layer of security. Next up, we're gonna mount a keyboard and mouse tray. You guessed it, underneath the desk. Obviously, we need a way to interface with the PCs that we build here, so keyboard and mouse is a good start. We'll do monitors after, but for now, we're gonna get this guy installed. I made sure to get a fairly long one. I think it's about, uh, maybe roughly two feet -ies. Yep, just shy of two feet, about 23 inches there wide. In case you're curious, this piece of kit is from, from, say it, I, I don't know, don't ask. All right, my dudes, the tray is installed. And I'm not super impressed, to be honest. It's fine, it does the job. It's just kind of cheap. There's a few gripes that I have with it. For starters, the installation is super straightforward and easy, and I don't feel like it's gonna collapse or anything or fall out. But anyway, my first complaint with this is that it doesn't actually snap open. Like, it snaps closed, like you can, you can feel the pinch so that it's kind of secure, but when it comes open, it just sort of, it, it doesn't secure. So if I'm like leaning forward at all while typing or whatever, it's just gonna slowly creep inward, which I don't really like. It's like, how, how easy would it have been to just make it stable when it comes out? I don't, I don't know. And the other issue is that I wish it was a little deeper, just maybe like an inch or two, because it's just, it's sort of shallow. It's plenty wide, but it's just not super deep. Now you can see like, I'm just, I just don't have a whole lot of wrist area. Actually, virtually none. I have to sort of push it, gotta push the keyboard up here, and then it's a bit more comfortable, but now it's like, I'm very close to hitting the desk when I wanna hit my F keys and stuff like that. Now, admittingly, I could have mounted the tray a little bit more forward, and that would have helped slightly, only by about half an inch, because anything more than that and the keyboard tray starts to protrude past the desk and I don't like that. So yeah, it does what it's supposed to, but if you're looking for an actual quality keyboard tray, I would suggest maybe looking elsewhere. Hopefully the next item is a winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's a light, an LED lamp. Believe it or not, this is one of the top answers that you guys gave me on X when I asked you what uh, what do you want in your dream workbench it is uh, as a work light. Obviously it makes sense. It's simple, but very helpful when you're trying to see inside of a dark cavernous case, trying to look at little screws and things like that, front panel connectors, and the like. So I found this one on Amazon as I did most of this stuff and this one was very highly rated but then again so was the keyboard tray. So we'll have to see after it's been installed. We got the lighty light installed. It's looking real good. I actually really like it. I dig it. I dig it. I think it works really well. Let's just turn it on right there. Nice little capacitive button and it is super bright without being harsh. It's very well diffused. Uh, you can see, look at, like, just look at, this is so, I can't believe I've been working in PCs without a working light like this for so long. You can even see how much thermal paste I got into the socket right there. Pretty nasty, but very cool light. You can actually move these arms as well. Look at this, they can go inward. Bum, ba -da -ba -bum. Just to give you that extra flexibility in case you want it over here, over there. If you want double the power, and then it's on this goose neck, which is super flexible. Loosey goosey, baby. It also 
also has more controls up here, including brightness, color temp, and even a timer. But what's even cooler is that this pops off and it's magnetic. It's a remote. It's a remote. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Wait, there you go. And you can stick it to any magnetic surface, which is pretty cool. My only minor gripe is that it's not the highest quality light. The, the quality of the light itself is nice, but the actual body and frame is a little on the cheapy side. It's nothing I'm too concerned about, like the plastic joints right here are a little bit cheap, and you know, you can kind of hear the plastic when you move them around and stuff like that, or like even the plastic housing of the lights themselves. I wish they were a little bit more stiff and that sort of thing, but overall, I can't complain. I'm not gonna be moving this light around too much. Oh, also, the, the individual lights do articulate, la 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 la, which is great, of course, for targeting specific areas of whatever I'm working on. Oh. Hallelujah. Now I'd be lying if I said 100% of this workbench is for the average PC builder. The fact is that I'm going to make some optimizations today that benefit me as a tech content creator. For example, whenever I record gameplay footage in order to show you guys performance and thermals of a new PC that I've just built, I generally just turn on a camera, stick it in front of a monitor, and press record. And that's been fine, but I feel like we can do better. So as part of this project, right now we're going to build a dedicated capture PC that we're going to mount underneath the desk once we're done with it. That way I can record gameplay directly from the system, which is going to give you guys a much better visual of exactly what's going on on screen. You'll be able to make out finer details of the image quality and things like that. And since we're capturing on a separate PC, we won't be bogging down the resources of the system we're testing, which is going to affect the performance of the results I'm showing. If you're pulling any inspiration from this video or want to build your own workbench similar to this one, you could probably just skip this step entirely. You don't really need a dedicated PC. What are you going to use it for? Just downloading your LAN drivers? Like, that seems a bit overkill. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the build. Most of these parts are brand spanking new, but some of them have come from the Bitwit inventory including the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. Yes, it's last gen, but we don't really need the latest and greatest for a gameplay capture system. This is going to do just fine. We still got eight cores, 16 threads, and actually we're not even going to be using this CPU long term. This is just a temporary placeholder until the Ryzen 7 5700G that I ordered gets in. It didn't arrive in time for filming, but it's going to be a very important swap because the 5700G has integrated graphics, which this does not, which means that we're going to have to use a discrete graphics card like this RTX 3080 Founders Edition, which is perfectly fine, although that means that for capturing, we'll have to use an external capture card like this EVGA XR1. It's perfectly fine and all, but it's just bulky and there's a lot of cabling, especially if this is all going on underneath the desk. I want it to be as clean and tidy and optimized as possible, and this just ain't it. So eventually, once that 5700G comes in, we'll remove the graphics card to open up that PCIe slot in order to install the Elgato 4K60 Pro, an internal capture card that does 4K60, as the name implies, which is going to be a much cleaner and more graceful solution than an external card. So I'll save him for later until that 5700G gets here. This is the motherboard. This is the ASRock Phantom, B550 Phantom Gaming ITX AX. Let's go ahead and install the CPU. <laughs> Pretty straight forward. Bum, ba, dum, ba, ba. I have to take a look at our cooler really quick, which is the Corsair IQ H150i RGB Elite, 360 millimeter AIO. I need to see the mounting solutions, see if we need to remove that AM5 bra or AM4 bracket or not. And we absolutely do. All right, fine. All right, all right, all right. Come on, little Sando. Are they ever going to sell AIOs that have the AMD bracket on by default and not Intel? I'm just saying, it sounds a little unwoke. What do we want? Socket quality. When do we want it? Now! Pre-applied thermal paste. Let's go! Come on, little babies! Come on! Remember, finger tap, boys. Finger tap. Memory, memory. 32 gigs. Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3600 speed. Whoa, go, whoa. Down, Bessie. I know I just finished saying we don't need the latest and greatest, but here we go. MP700 Pro from Corsair. Two terabytes, because that's very important. Actually, storage is going to be kind of important because we, we are going to be capturing a lot of gameplay footage, so that's not super overkill. But the PCIe Gen 5 on this is pretty insane, especially because we only support PCIe Gen 4 on the B550 platform. But wh wh whatever. Why did I ask Corsair for this? I'm an idiot. Idiot. Thanks, Corsair. Down, down we go. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Did we? Oh, yes, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Here you go, baby. Here's some of that sticky icky. One-handed legend. Our case is the Corsair 2000D RGB Airflow. Comes with three addressable RGB fans, 120 millimeters, right here at the front. I think there's an option with no fans as well for a lower price. Looks like we've got power button, two USB 3, USB C, I believe that's 10 gigabits per second, combo audio jack, and a reset button. This is just mesh, pure mesh, left, right, top, back, all the meshes. I didn't review this case when it first came out, so I don't know too much about it. We're gonna explore it together. I'm gonna, oh wow, that came off really easy. Magnets, yes. Ah, okay, so power supply gets mounted at the top 
top here. And then it looks like we got a pass through cable. It's routed down the back here. Interesting. Removable dust filter. Okay. Where's the motherboard IO? That's not it. What the heck? Is it the bottom? Oh. What, what, what's going on here? What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh, okay. Motherboard IO is down here. Interesting. Actually, this kind of works out perfectly for me because I'm going to be mounting this under the desk, like I said, facing this way. So actually, my motherboard IO will be to the right. It won't be completely at the bottom, which is going to be a lot more accessible. Okay. Does this pop up? Okay. Push pin. There are fans. Oh, I believe these are, oh, these are slim fans. I think these are like 15 millimeters thick. Two thumb screws and go. All right. Come on, baby. A spoonful of thermal paste makes the motherboard go down. All right. Let me wire up these front panel connectors. Yeah. All right. Here's where we're at right now. Everything's going in pretty nice and easy. I'm not caring too much about cable management in this build, but there's plenty of room here for tidying stuff down. Just got to install our GPU, which again is temporary until we can swap it out for that capture card. Come on, baby. By the way, I don't know if you caught it, but we're using an SF750 from Corsair, that SFX unit. This case does support SFX and SFXL power supplies. And since it's not an ATX 3.0 unit, we do need our adapter, PCIe to 12 volt high power. Bada bing, bada boom. Now, before we finally install the radiator and finish off this build, there's one thing that we have to do, and that is to install an external power button. Since this system is going to be under the desk and not just under it, but also at the back side of it, I don't want to have to run around and bend down and press the power button every single time I want to turn it on and off. So this is going to come in handy. It's going to be a nice little power button. That's a little, that's a little clicky. They do sell a mechanical key switch version of this, which seems a lot more fun, but it's also a lot easier to press. I like that this one's a little bit recessed and harder to accidentally hit and power off the system. So we're going to go ahead and wire this up. Here we go. You can't see shit. I don't know why I'm filming this. Although I should mention that this power button comes with a splitter. You can see it's split off into two sides right here. Boom and boom. That way I can still retain functionality of the power button on the case, but I have the convenience of this guy as well. AIO time. Just got to latch these little puppies. I think that's in. And just lower down. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Woo. Oh, and shout out to the power button for having a super long six foot cable so we can mount this guy anywhere we want. I wonder if it works. <gasps> oh, it works. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I like it. 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 This one is a desk mount I got off of the Amazon. I've never used it before, but uh, got high reviews. And it should fit the elongated dimensions of our 2000D just fine if all goes smoothly. Let's get this sucker on. Monitors, monitors. I think for any good workbench, you probably want at least one display so that you can actually see if the new PC that you've just built is posting, if there's anything wrong with it, you can troubleshoot. You always want some peripherals nearby. The display I'll be connecting to any new PC that I'm building is the Corsair Xenion 27 QHD 240. It's an OLED display, 27 inches. It's got all the bells and whistles. This is actually the same exact panel that I used for the his and hers gaming setup using the Platform 6 desks, also from Corsair. Perfect black levels, amazing color accuracy, 0.03 gray to gray, NVIDIA G-Sync. AMD FreeSync Premium. And you know, it's super important for me to have a really nice gaming monitor connected to whatever new PC I'm building here because oftentimes I'm going to be telling you guys what the gaming experience is like on said PC for whatever video I'm shooting. And I don't want that experience to be compromised in any way by using a subpar monitor. So this one's obviously not going to have any issues with that. The other display, however, is just for the capture PC. As I mentioned, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. We're just using it so that we can navigate and operate OBS and things like that. So this is just a basic Dell, 24 inches, 1080p, 75 hertz, I think. And that's going to go right next to the Xenion, I actually might mount this portrait instead of landscape just to save a little bit of space. And so I've got this, uh, this dual monitor arm mount that's gonna mount directly to the desk. So let's fire it up. <laughs> Got the monitors installed, looking good, looking good. Now from an aesthetic perspective, I kind of wish that the Xenion was on the right side. I think it would just look a little bit better, but I do want to keep this one on the outside just for filming purposes. In the event that I just need to get a quick shot of you know me dialing in some UEFI settings or something like that, I think the setup's gonna work for now. I haven't done a lick of cable management yet because I'm still waiting for some 10 foot uh, display port cables to come in. The six foot ones that I have on hand just don't reach where I need them to. The monitor stand, uh, I love it. it. It works perfectly fine and it really just keeps the monitors as far back as I need them to be so it doesn't take up any more room on the workbench. Let's talk about the rest of the peripherals though. We have two keyboards and two mice, one set each for the fresh builds that I'm building here and then the other for the capture PC. For the capture PC, we've got a wireless setup here from Artec and it's just using a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle and the keyboard looks fine from what I can tell. It's got a number pad which is nice in case I need to use that but the mouse I'm not so hot about. I didn't realize this when I bought it but it doesn't have forward and back buttons which is a no 
no-go for me. It's a deal breaker. So I'm gonna have to replace this with just, I don't know, I'll probably just use one of my many Logitech G302s that I have lying around. However, I do need a place to put these when not in use, which is why I picked up this organizer storage thing, which clamps to the edge of the desk. The keyboard can just go in this big old slot right here. Then it also comes included with this magnetic, uh, I guess just like this tray, this mag little magnetic tray. Slot the mouse in, boom, you're done. As for the fresh builds that I'll be assembling at this workbench, we've got a Corsair K65 Plus wireless. It connects three different ways. Super fast 2.4 gigahertz wireless, Bluetooth, or directly via a USB-C cable, which is probably what I'll be using. I already have the keyboard right here. Very nice keyboard, actually. Super impressed with the build quality. It's got a nice weight to it, 75% and dedicated F keys, which is important for me. I don't really need a number pad for this particular set of peripherals because I'm just gonna be gaming on it mostly. It's using Corsair's red switches, which are smooth and linear, and the stabilizers feel great. Super solid, not too much wobble for all the keycaps. And then we also have a very nice tactile volume wheel, which presses inward. The mouse is the Corsair M75. It's a lightweight RGB gaming mouse. It's got left and right clicks, nice scroll wheel, front and back buttons, unlike the other mouse over there. And it's actually ambidextrous, so there's front and back buttons on the other side as well. It is wired with a braided cable, USB-A on the end, and there's a DPI button on the bottom. Now, since the cables for these peripherals are gonna be mostly unplugged, I did pick up this set of magnetic cable clasps from a company called Joyroom. It's basically a nice way to hold the ends of your cables when you're not using them, but it gives you quick access when you do. It's got a little magnetic clasp and adhesive on one side, so you can just stick it to the edge of your desk, which I'm gonna be doing on the back side. I've taken the liberty of adding our last few items to the workbench off camera just to speed things up, including the Gamers Nexus Mod Mat. Absolutely love this thing. I've been using it for years. It's one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that my desk has stayed in such good shape for so long, despite building on it so many times. I've also added a cup holder. I don't know why I didn't buy this thing sooner. It's awesome. It's just made of plastic. It clamps to the side of the desk. It is very sturdy. I like how thick the plastic is. It even has like a little opening for like a mug handle if you want to mug out. And then we also added a USB-C hub. This is connecting to our capture PC right over there. It wasn't long enough. Obviously the cable's super short, so I had to get an extension, USB-C extension cable, but it's 10 gigabits per second on all four ports, two USB-A, two USB-C. This obviously makes plug-in USB devices in and out a lot easier, so I don't have to go to the back every time. And I believe that is every single item that we're adding to this workbench. We still have to do cable management, so stick around for that. One thing I wanted to mention is that there was one item that we didn't get around to installing, and that's this wireless charger that actually charges supported devices through the desk up to 30 millimeters in thickness, which this desk definitely qualifies for, but there's simply no more room underneath the desk for it, at least anywhere that makes sense. There's probably room somewhere in the middle, but that would be really dumb. The only thing that could possibly work is if I mounted it right here in the corner, but at that point, and I've already tested this out, powered it up and everything, I would actually have to have my phone hanging off the desk slightly in some way or another in order for the sensors to line up. And I just don't trust myself enough to not knock my phone on the floor. So we are gonna shelf this for now, but we are now ready for cable management. It is complete, it's complete. Oh my god, it's looking so good, guys. I'm so excited. Where do we even start here? I want to give you guys a little walk around, a grand tour. I guess we'll start with the test PC. This is just a sample system that we've got here, theoretically one that I would have freshly built. We've already got it running a game on the Xenion display with the capture PC monitor right next to it. We got the set of peripherals for that system as well as keyboard and mouse for the test PC, our super awesome extra large drawer that I've filled with a bunch of essential items like my iFixit kit, a bunch of custom water cooling tools, and then we also have our remote for the light. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm already making use of the USB hub. We've got the wireless dongle for those peripherals over there. I did mount the external power button for the capture PC right underneath the drawer because there just wasn't a great place to put it elsewhere. I'd have to kind of fish my hand around in there and stuff. So it just made the most sense here, which means I have to leave a little bit of slack so that anytime I open the drawer, it doesn't snag or anything like that. Got our beloved cup holder, doing a great job, buddy. All of our magnetic tools just hang in there securely. Storage for the keyboard and mouse, capture PC, running like a champ. It's looking good so far. And I should mention that we've obviously added a ton of weight to this desk, but it's still far below its max load capacity. So I'm not concerned at all about, you know, having more chonky hardware on here, full towers and that sort of thing. And it's still rolling very well. The casters are very high quality and it definitely helps that we're on solid concrete. We've got our cable clasps here for our peripherals that we'll be connecting to the test PC, as well as a power cord. I actually had to add a fourth one because I almost forgot about the power cord 
port. I did have to leave a little bit of slack for these cables, obviously, so that they can actually reach whatever system I'm plugging them into, but not so much slack to the point where they're dragging on the floor whenever the desk is at uh, sitting height. It's not the most attractive cable management, but it is super functional. Our test PSU, which is wired directly to the surge protector, as is everything that's powered here. Everything that uses an AC power cord is, is connected to that surge protector, including the monitors, the test PSU, both PCs, the light, as well as the motorized desk itself. So everything is powered over a single cord, and that just makes everything super convenient. Our widow baby drawer for the PSU cables, and here's a back view of the monitor setup. The cable management here cleaned up real nice. And last but not least, we got the power situation looking fresh. I'm super stoked to start building here. Everything is just exactly where I want it to be and practically within arm's reach. It's just, it's, it's gonna be a dream. It really is a dream workbench for me. Obviously, I might make some tweaks and additions down the line. If you have any ideas, feel free to throw them at me, but for now, we are ready to rock. As always, guys, I will put links to all the items that we use today in the video description. It'll all be there. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe and uh, click the notification bell if you want notifications anytime that I upload a video. A lot of you guys have been saying you haven't been receiving notifications whenever I post new content. So if you want them noties, click the bell. Thank you so much. I will see y'all in the next one.